We talked about Providence plenty on this, so we're not going to get into them again. Uh, if they continue to win, we'll, we'll talk about the Flyers playing more. But just a, a, a blind, uh, let's just blindly guess right now for fun. It's, it's February 2nd. Providence is 19 and 2. I looked at the resume last night. Uh, Palm has him as a two seed. I think you can make that argument. I think I put him as the number one three seed as of this morning. But just, you know, six, less than six weeks out from selection Sunday. What's our guess here? I'm going to say, I, I'm going to say the Providence Friars, which are. As we speak this morning, because they keep winning close, this team is 48th in Ken Palm. Right. Um, so that I, would suggest I, I, that I, would I, suggest I, that they're going to take some losses that are overdue here. That's we'll just suggest it. I'm going to say because the resume is still strong, Parrish. I'm going to say PC is going to be on the back end of the three line. Maybe they're the last number th- one. Th- that's my guess. Uh, Selection Sunday, Providence is on the three line. What's your what's your just what's your guess when we get there? Top four seed, um, I guess if I got to pick a number, I'll go three as well because the body of work is is really impressive. The computer numbers and the selection committee, you can say, well, the computer numbers don't matter. They are going to matter. The, the, committee is, the committee is going to look at these computer numbers. Yes. Um, and the same way w- we think it's wild when Loyola Chicago gets whatever seed it got last year. Was it an eight, something like that? Yeah. Despite, despite having incredible computer numbers. It's going to be um, something it, that, like that works both ways. You, you know, if, if you think it's crazy to give an eight seed to somebody who's got a top 10 Kimpom number, then if you're being consistent, it's also crazy to give, a, you know, a two seed to somebody that's got a 48 beside him at Kimpom. And so the committee's going to have to work through that. And I'm not saying there's an easy solution to it because, um, you are right. Based on the computer numbers, it suggests that Providence um, uh, uh, is going to, you know, take some losses that are maybe a little overdue, because, uh, you know, they're not actually operating at the level of a top fifteen team, even if they have the resume of a, a top fifteen team. On the other hand, you could argue, and I think Ed Cooley would argue this: um, we're not just winning close games because we're lucky. We're kidding, right. winning close games because we're experienced, because we're smart, because we're tough, because we're strong-minded, um, because we stay calm under pressure. And I do think there's something to that. I, I told you, I think it was the Butler game a few weekends ago, but I was I was watching it, and FS1, I believe, had a camera in Ed's huddle, and they were down in the second half. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and by the way, coaches are very aware when that camera's in the huddle. So they, they they conduct themselves accordingly, and there's also an agreement between uh, the network and the coach. Like I'll let that camera in my huddle, but like if I say, "Don't burn um, me," yeah, yeah, don't burn me. Like if I say, "Are you a F and P?" Like you're not putting that on FS1, right? So there's an understanding there. You're never going to see anything controversial coming out of a huddle. But Ed, this is the point, was actually doing breathing exercises with his team in the huddle. Uh, we're fine. There's look at that much the clock. We're at home, plenty of time on the clock. Take a deep breath. Let's breathe. Let's breathe together. It was just really. I don't think they're calm under pressure just because it's they're randomly calm under pressure. I think it starts at the top. I think it starts with him. And so I'm a little hesitant to say, ah, they just get lucky because I don't know that that's true. I think there's something to be said for they are built for those moments and ways that other teams aren't. For instance, when I'm playing golf, I miss most putts reg- no matter what. But I can tell you when I'm like make this six footer to win the hole. I get bothered by that. I don't, I, I am not as good under that pressure as, um, mm-hmm. as somebody, as somebody else might be. I'm not good at, anyway. I'm not trying to uh, 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 misrepresent, but I'm like, uh, I am, I am, I will miss a put under pressure that I otherwise would have a better chance of making because I'm weak minded on the golf course. <laughs> that, I, I think, that, you're not, you're not alone. That's, that's part of what makes golf fun. And I do that with my, with my buds as well. Literally drop a 10 yeah. on the green, you're 10 feet out, make it, it's yours. And you don't make it like we, yeah. yeah all, no. all. Oh, I, I had a, I had a guy one time who I uh, was with and, and he was really good and he, he, we got to talking and he, he was like, yeah, you know, I tried to play professionally, just couldn't do it. And I was like, oh, you know, what was the problem? He said, I could go out, same exact course, same exact conditions. I could go out with you, and I shoot 67. You put me in a tournament against other people who are competing, like, for real things, uh, I shoot a 74. Like, I really was that different of a golfer. Nothing's changed other than the circumstances, and I could not mentally handle it. So that's a real thing. My point is, Providence, I think, can mentally handle it. That's what they've shown throughout the season. 
and um, it, it's it's one of the, the the best stories going in college basketball. 